So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I make my rock paste, which I use on bases and other materials to make sort of like this rock effect out of basically cheap stuff that you've probably got kicking around your house, recycled bits and yeah, let's get on with the video. So we all know buying any kind of like hobby crafting materials can start to add up very quickly. And that's why I've been experimenting and having a bit of a play around with the different materials that you can use that you've probably got around your house so you can just recycle those. It's good for your pocket, it's good for the environment to get a, in my opinion, a pretty good rocky effect. You can also get other effects from this as well and we'll get onto that a bit later. So first thing you are gonna need is Cardboard. So basically the cardboard boxes that everything gets shipped to you in Amazon packages. It's a really good little material. You've probably got tons of it kicking around in this day and age. So I grabbed some of that. Now to get this prepared, I just kind of rip it all up into smaller chunks and then throw it into a Tupperware thing of water. And then I leave that to soak for about 12 to 24 hours. What this does is it really gets in there and it allows you kind of squish it all together and it becomes this horrible yucky consistency. So once you've let it soak, then grab yourself a, a blender. If my wife finds out I've been using our blender for this, she's probably gonna kill me. Throw it in there and then start to blend it up. If you don't have a blender, don't worry. You could probably rip it up into smaller chunks and just squish it together and get it. It's just, it's gonna be messy and it's also gonna take a little bit longer. So what I do is I throw it into that blender, get it all nice and kind of mushy and it starts to look like this kind of dog poo or baby poo, basically any form of horrible poo you can imagine. It also smells a little funky, but I got over that pretty quickly. I then threw it all back into a Tupperware box, and the first mistake I made with this when I've been playing with it is I will often keep it a little bit too wet. So the best thing you can do is squeeze out a lot of that water and kind of just let it run into the sink or just dispose of it in the best way you possibly can. Try not to let too much cardboard get out because otherwise it's gonna start clogging up your sink, but try to get as much water as you possibly can out of it because otherwise it becomes much harder to work with later on and it also starts to run everywhere and it increases drying time, which you don't want. So once you've got your nice cardboard mush paste, <laughs> really bizarre, take it through to wherever you do your normal crafting. Now at this stage, I throw in some PVA and also what you wanna be working with is some black acrylic paint. So I just use some really cheap black acrylic paint that I've got from the craft store throw it in there and the more that you use, the faster your drying time will be. And also as well, it kind of helps you if you're gonna do some like dry brushing over it to get this kind of like stony effect. And if you want it to be black underneath rather than brown, so it depends on your preference. Amongst that as well, I will use recycled tea bags. So I make a lot of tea for my wife, it's great for her, but it also gives me a crafting material. So I let those tea bags dry out. I then rip them open and pour all of those little tea leaves into a Tupperware box and put them somewhere that's nice and warm dries out nicely and then I can sprinkle a lot of them in here or I can use them as different kinds of material in the future. I throw that in there and then mix it up with a lollipop stick, get it all nice and going and at this point you can start spreading it on whatever you want to use it on. So in the case of things like bases you can smother it all on there but then you can also add more onto it as well to get these kind of like higher layers of rocks and just give your base a little bit more definition. You can use it on basically whatever type of base that you want and it will work and it comes out really nice. It's nice hard texture. And because you've already added some of that black paint in there or whatever color paint you want to use, if you want to go for like a sandy texture instead, you could probably throw in some like yellows and oranges. If you want to go for like an ocean texture, throw in some like dark blues, you can mix it up to start off with and then go back in later. But because you put that color in there, if you start to chip it or break it later on, it's colored underneath as well. So you don't need to worry about like white bits or like kind of light brown bits of cardboard showing through. So it's really good for that. In terms of these, I grabbed some more recycled bits. I decided I was gonna try all sorts of different bottles for this um, and different bits of plastic because I wanted to see how it would stick to it. So I grabbed these like um, vitamin tubes. You know, I'm getting old now. I need to keep myself vaguely healthy. So I grabbed these vitamin tubes, stuck them onto just some standard bases and then started from the bottom and worked my way up. Now, as you can probably see in the B-roll for this, the first batch that I made was far too wet. So what was happening is all the water was kind of slowly seeping out of it and then dripping onto this. So I used a, um, like a sheet of baking paper just so that way it wouldn't ruin my desk or whatever else. But ideally you want to try and get as much of that water out to start off with. Work from the bottom all the way to the top it just helps it to kind of stick. I didn't find any issues with it like kind of running off or dropping off, which, you know, was always nice. And then I worked on this big bottle, which was an absolute mistake. Um, <laughs> I was hoping that I'd get a different effect from it. But as you can see, as I start to put it onto this bottle, this bottle really starts taking a shape that, yeah, <laughs> is probably not appropriate for the battlefield. But we'll see in a later video. Now, once you've got 
all of it on there. You can just leave it. And this is the bit where it kind of falls down compared to like store-bought stuff or stuff you can buy online. With stuff that you buy online, you can use something like Sculptor Mold, for example. It's got a relatively quick drying time. It's, it's not super quick, but it's a hell of a lot quicker than these. Now, this took about 24 hours to dry out. The big bottle took forever to dry out. It took a couple of days. The bases dry out much quicker, so these dried out actually in probably a couple of hours, I found, the smaller ones especially. But it does take a lot longer to dry. And if you don't have somewhere that's warm, if you're doing it in the winter, for example, it could start to become a bit of an issue. But if you are doing it in the winter, stick them next to a radiator or something like that. As long as you've got some greaseproof paper under them so it doesn't drip onto your carpet or your floor, you're pretty much golden. Once they're dried, depending on what color you've used, you can then go back in with a dry brush. So for all of these, I just hit them with gray. So even these ones here, which had a less of the acrylic paint in there, I quite like the way they turned out because it almost looks like this kind of muddy rock underneath of it. And then you've got the more stony tops and everything, add some highlight on there. And you've got these that look more like kind of like a, a, I guess like a baked earth or baked rock or something like that. And I've got these ideas if you could maybe kind of put lava going through it and then put your rock paste on it and then just have these cracks going through it. There's really a lot of possibilities that you could use with this. As I mentioned, if you use different colors, because of the way it forms, although it looks rocky, I quite like the way it looks, some of the smaller ones also look like they could be waves, which would be great for some like water units and stuff like that. So you could have a lot of fun with this. Because it takes longer to dry as well, you've got a lot of time to work with it. So you can really go mad with it and layer it up and add more bits onto it and mold it around as well. And it's really flexible in that respect. So I really like working with this kind of slush that I've made. It seems to turn out very nicely. You could probably do a lot of like rock formations as well on it. And I guess how I've done in the past is I've used loads of broken bits of foam that I then stick together. And then I use sculptor mold to kind of just fill in all the edges and I get some quite nice rocks from that. You could probably do identical with this. So, you know, worthwhile trying out and I'll probably do that in the future. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. What do you use for like your homemade rock texture or basing texture? I think this adds a nice bit of definition. So you could probably even put things like your units once they're finished and painted straight into it if you wanted to use it as like a more of a muddy texture and that'd really kind of stick them to the base and add a bit of definition. Very happy with this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it helps you out as well and saves you some money in the future. And yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you use for your basing texture if it's homemade? As always, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, hit the like and subscribe button and come along for some more crafting and 3D printing and painting videos in the future. Head on over to my Discord channel as well, where we just chat all things like crafting and hobby and all of that jazz. And if you really want to support the channel, head on over to my Patreon page, it just helps me to keep the lights on. In the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.